Well, 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 Yannick Sinner crushes Daniil Medvedev in their semifinal matchup at the Miami Open 2024. What a performance from Yannick Sinner and a really tough look for Daniil Medvedev, who just looked like he did not have any options or ways to hurt Yannick Sinner. And Yannick Sinner looked like he could almost do no wrong. He just looked super comfortable out there in whatever facet of the match it was, whether it was rallies from the baseline, whether it was on the return, on his own serve, he looked totally comfortable. So I was expecting a tighter match from this, and I was interested to see how Daniil Medvedev would serve. And it turns out it's one of the worst serving performances he's ever had. So we're going to take a deep dive into that. How Sinner is looking so good right now. Can anyone stop him? Let's get in and break down this match. This is The Slice. Wow. I mean, take no prisoners. Yannick Sinner just looking like a bad man in control out there. Really just playing, you know, continuing to play amazing tennis in 2024. He lost, obviously, uh, to Carlos Alcaraz and Indian Wells, but he's right back on the train um, of beating everyone else in the world, basically. And he beats Daniil Medvedev again after he beat him at the Australian Open in the final, as we know. So coming into this match, what I said on Twitter was Daniil Medvedev, this is not complicated. There's nothing really smart about this. Daniil Medvedev's first serve win percentage and his basically serving performance is going to have to be good. And we should keep an eye on that. So I did as I watched this match go through uh, and right from the get-go, his his service, I mean, he got broken his first service game. Uh, he got two free points in that service game. Um, and that is, you know, that still didn't help him hold there. Uh, and then that he kind of felt like he was behind the eight ball right away. So if you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet, thanks for subscribing to The Slice. I'm Stephen Bouton. I'm the host. I'm from Canada. And we deliver tennis, ATP, WTA news, analysis, reviews to you every week. So thanks for joining the crew and subscribing. We're on our way to 20,000 subscribers. So... The serve battle. Let's, the, 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 the big points in this matchup was the serve battle and then the subsequent return battle and then how these guys played from the baseline compared to the styles that they brought to this matchup before. So let's start with the serve because it's important. They both served 64% of their first serves in. So decent. So that's a indicator. They both got the same amount of first serves in. Who was able to do more damage uh, or hold more easily? And it was pretty obvious that that was Yannick Sinner. Yannick Sinner's first serve win percentage, 80%, good. Daniil Medvedev's first serve win percentage, 53%. Terrible. Terrible. That's like literally one of the worst. I'm looking at tennis abstract right now. And in his last, you know, since the beginning of the year, he definitely has not, um, he definitely has, that's the worst win percentage he's had. This is coming from the ATP Tour um, page, but this is the that's the worst win percentage he's had by five points. Um, he's had all year. Two of the worst, the other two, the other two worst were at the end of India Wells against Tommy Paul and, and uh, Carlos Alcaraz, as we talked about. But coming in Miami, we thought he would be serving at a higher clip or winning his first serve points at a higher clip because of the quicker court conditions. 81% in this first round against Fucevic, 71% versus Cam Nori, 70% versus Dominic Kepfer against Nicholas Yari, who's not really a great returner. Obviously, he won 80%. So is his first serve just not as dominant as it used to be? Well, that's hard to say. And I guess as, as the season goes on, we'll keep taking a look at that. But Yannick Sinner, you can just say, handled Daniel Medvedev's serve amazingly well today and just basically neutralized it and almost made it like a liability for Daniel. So we'll get to Sinner's returning ability in a second here, but second serve win points, 59 for Sinner, 39 for Daniel. So just an unbelievably more positive serving performance from Sinner than it was from Medvedev. And I feel like Medvedev needs to have the serve be more of a weapon than Sinner does. So that's where 
if I'm Daniel and you kind of saw it in the second set, you just see him start to panic. Like, what do I, what do I do if I can't get ahead in my own service games or use my serve to get free points? Cause he really did not have that many free points in the match. Um, Sinner was just doing a great job returning, getting into the rallies. And then when he's in the rallies, you just felt like he had just a bit more sauce. Medvedev. Okay. So that's, that's the serve. We'll wait till the rallies here in a second. The return. Daniel Medvedev started the match close up on the baseline or fairly, I would say a neutral return, a regular return position, which historically against a lot of other players and center in the past, he stood way back and started that started that way. And, but he didn't start that way to this match. He was closer and then he would return and then try and get up on the baseline as quick as possible. He always tries to get back to the baseline, but Sinner found out pretty quick that he was returning closer to the baseline, and you saw Sinner start to serve to the body more. In the second game, in the, in the or sorry, in the third game of the match, after right after Sinner had broken Dino Medvedev, uh, Medvedev got into that game a bit, and he had two break points. I believe it was 15-40. And on both break points, Donick Sinner went big first serves to the body, and got a free point on the first one and won the rally on the second one after a bit of a jammed return. So that's where Medvedev has a bit of a liability when he comes forward. It's because he's so lanky that the body becomes a big target to take away his ability to like put a good return back in play. You can't really get it by Danell, even if he's up on the baseline. He might not feel as comfortable returning from there. But if you get into the body like Sinner was doing, that makes him go chicken wing and just dumped the ball back. You saw him blocking on the forehand, the a block slice return from those body shots. And that's just smart tennis from center, figuring out how to serve to this guy, no matter where he's returning from. So by the end of the match, you saw Medvedev drop back, but at that point, his tires were kind of spinning. He was get, he was just, he was literally just going like this to his bench the whole time. To be fair, it didn't look to me like Medvedev played a good match. Like he can play better than that. He didn't play it, very aggressively i didn't think so but then again every time he did try and go not every time but often when he would try and go for more aggressive shots he would miss so then if you're not feeling like you have those shots in the day you're going to back up um, but again three set matches center was locked in from the first point the match is over pretty quickly similar to dimitra versus alcaraz yesterday the better player just was in the driver's seat and that match can go pretty quick so six one six two so Danil started the match closer to the baseline and and it didn't work. He, I feel like that might have affected his rhythm. He wasn't starting the rallies how he wants to, and then he was starting it seemingly playing defense and letting Yannick just punch at you from the baseline is just not a recipe for success. I don't care how good of a mover or how good at defense you are. On the center return service side, he has been improving his service game, his his service return. I think that used to be a weakness of his. We definitely saw that in 2022 at Wimbledon when he lost to, to Djokovic. When Djokovic started serving better, it was just too easy for Djokovic to get free points for for Sinner's returns to drop short. But today we saw him just even good first serves from Medvedev out wide, forehand or backhand, reading it, timing it per correctly, boom, hitting it deep, getting right into the rally, and then having an advantage in the rally. So... A lot of returning just comes from experience. Yannick Center is getting better every month now and getting more experience and his returns getting better and becoming less of a liability. And that's just joining the rest of his game, which is also improving all the time. His serve today was great. His return today was great. And then from the baseline, it just feels like he does everything that Medvedev does just a little bit better. He, he knows how to play the defensive neutral ball rallies and then he knows how to just turn it up a little bit forehand or backhand and crack open the rallies. And he has like more of an ability to do that with more topspin than Medvedev does. So as Medvedev, you're like, what do I do? What do I do to hurt this guy? And today, I mean, what can you say? It didn't look like he had really any options to hurt Sinner based on the way Sinner was playing, based on the way Medvedev was playing. So I don't know what to say. If Medvedev had come out and started this match like he started the Australian Open where he was serving better and he was playing much more aggressively behind it, maybe 
that would have worked better, but it didn't, he didn't seem to have the confidence to do that today, or maybe that, that just wasn't his game plan. But whatever he did, it didn't work. And Sinner walked out of there just like, that's business, 6162. Thanks for coming out. I'll see you in the final, either Dimitrov or Zverev. So let me your thoughts down below. That's my from my perspective, my analysis. A very good match from Sinner. Bit of a disheartening match from Medvedev. Didn't really have it, but also just felt like he didn't, nothing he tried worked against a Sinner who just seems to have more options and dynamism. Which is someone in the comments helped me on the last mat on the last video. Dynamism in his game right now. More options. He's got more angles to play with on the court. And Sinner played a great match. So there's a quick analysis of Sinner destroying Medvedev in the Miami Open semifinal. Extends the head to head um, even further. I was wondering if you could just pull it up here. Um, but you. We saw we already looked through the stats here, but if you look at the total point stats, uh, winners seventeen winners to three unforced errors for Center, unbelievable. <laughs> That's just insane. Seventeen to three, and only seven winners for Medvedev, and that's obviously including aces with nine unforced errors. So the other thing, I guess, the other thing here, I, I wanted to look at these stats a bit more depth in more depth earlier. The average first serve speed, like Sinner's just hitting the ball much harder. Max speed, 213 to 207. First serve average speed, 12 kilometers faster. Seven miles an hour faster than Medvedev. So what's going on there? Is Medvedev losing a bit of steam? Is he slowing down a little bit? Is he not able to pound those serves like he was? Or more was his serve more just good because it was accurate before? No, I think he had a huge serve. And I would think that those numbers are a little bit lower than normal. So lots to consider there. Lots to consider there. Let me your thoughts down below. Thanks for being here. Thanks for subscribing. We will see you next time here on The Slice. And we'll be here for a final preview or reaction. Thanks for being here. Bye.